Our scripture lesson this morning comes from uh, the letter of James, the fifth chapter. Now, there were several what I would say more traditional readings that were suggested by the lectionary, but I like James. James, I've only preached from it twice, to be honest. James speaks to faith. James doesn't just reside in history or in the corridors of those deep theological thoughts, but simple faith. So let us hear these words of simple faith from James, the fifth chapter, verses 7 through 10. My friends, be patient until the Lord returns. Think of farmers who wait patiently for the spring and summer rains to make their valuable crops grow. Be patient like those farmers and don't give up. The Lord will soon be here. Don't grumble about each other or you will be judged. And the judge is right outside the door. My friends, follow the example of the prophets who spoke for the Lord. They were patient even when they had to suffer. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. So I thought about two words that would be kind of like the foundations of today's message. Two words that don't normally go together for most of us this time of year. These words are patience and family. And so, since I know you want to practice putting those words together, I'm going to invite each of you to turn to someone on my cue and say patience and family. You can say it to me. Ready, set, go. Patience and family. Patience and family. Yeah, here sometimes they don't always go together. But God has called us to, to embrace those phrases, to embrace how they intertwine with one another, to embrace how this scripture in James invites us to be like farmers. Jeremy, I never miss an opportunity to be like a farmer, to be like farmers who some of the most intelligent people that I've encountered, some of the most business savvy and wise people that I have had the joy of either being in ministry with or in relationship with, but some of the most faithful people because they cannot control the rains, whether it's summer or spring. They can't control the heat. They can't control when the snow is going to melt so they can get in the fields. They can't control uh, so many variables. But yet Jesus uses them and holds them up as models for us today as we seek to unpack patience and family. Now, I've chosen the overarching sermon theme of seeking peace in the family. For some would say it's an oxymoron, but for others, we realize that that is what God invites us to and invites us to embrace this season of preparation. For Advent, that time building up to the great Christmas celebration is a time of preparation. But how we get there matters. Some would say, it really doesn't matter. I just want my gift and my presents, Brad. But it matters. And therefore, God invites us to seek peace in our family. Now, unless your family is different than mine, and hopefully it is, but in my family, peace does not naturally reside. We have to manufacture peace. We have to plan it, schedule it, and then we have to pray and hope that it still happens. Peace, that is something that's more than just not fighting. Peace, that thing that is where unity and hope are displayed. Now I want to give credit where credit is due. One writer and commentator of this biblical passage, John M. Buchanan, really brings it home for me in, in several ways. And so I'm going to be using him throughout my sermon. So just in case somebody knows his words, John M. Buchanan has helped me to unpack James 5, verses 
7 through 10. He wrote that this is a season of frenetic lifestyles, which is pervasive in our modern American culture and almost demands impatience. Urban traffic, gridlock on the bridges coming from Peoria. Who would do construction in this time of year, during this time of year? But yet they're doing it. And so when you get stuck trying to come back, many of you from your job or some of you might come from some fine eating establishments in the Heights. I got to throw that out there. The Hearth, great restaurant. Wherever you're going as you cross those places where bottlenecks occur, God gives us an opportunity to just calm down. We're told that there are, are health experts to say one of the greatest risks during not only this time of year, but throughout our daily American life is stress. And uh, the, the, um, the stress that impatience produces. Some religious thinkers and Christian thinkers and other religious leaders actually engage in developing breathing techniques for us so that we can calm down, so that we can embrace the joy of the moment, so that we can just breathe. It's amazing that we need to be taught to just breathe again, to be patient with one another. And in that patience, we're able to grab hold of, we're able to embrace the hope of the season. At least that is my hope. I have chosen the title, Seeking Peace in Our Families, for today's message for a multitude of reasons. First, because it is a constant goal and aspiration of mine. Two, because our larger families, whether it is our families of origin, our families of choice, our Willow Hill Church family, our United Methodist Church family, our family of God family, whatever grouping you choose to identify, we struggle, and peace seems to be an elusive goal. This morning, it is my hope and prayer that we will struggle with the implications of James 5 as we continue in this season of preparation. Someone once said, patience should add flavor to our faith as we seek peace. Now, some of you know, I like to get up in the morning and work out, but lo and behold, I haven't lost any weight. But I still like to get up and work out it, because it gives me the ability to savor those flavors and all those treats that several of you drop off in the office. You know, those cookies, those candies, those uh, 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 fudges, those cakes. And just in case you hadn't dropped it off, you still got time. Uh, <laughs> the, the flavors, that they, they, I savor them. But I don't just savor them for my own physical, personal edification. I savor them because they remind me of good times. They remind me of times in which my family gathered to celebrate God. They remind me of carols and people who are no longer amongst us who were in churches that I grew up in and churches that I served. They remind me that God is still around. The flavors that come through this time of patience and slowing down. Now, when I look in the book of James again, especially in this passage, I'm reminded of one verse in particular that jumped out at me. It said, be patient like those farmers and don't give up. Don't give up. While we are singing about a season of celebration, there are many amongst us, some within these walls and of many more outside, who don't see it as a season of celebration. They struggle with emotional and, 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 and mental health struggles. They struggle with grief and loneliness, and many of them just want to give up. They want to chuck it all and say, what's the use? But I think 
if we embrace and if we invite them possibly to re-embrace this faith of planting something, not knowing if it's going to come up like we plan, but still hoping. If we embrace that type of patience, then we can be a model of what it means to not give up as we seek peace in our families. Some have also said that this season of seeking peace invites us. And others have said requires us to build healthy relationships. Now, healthy relationships are not to be taken for granted. They require planning. As I said, in my family, I have to plan them. Don't know about y'all. Healthy relationships many times require us to, to analyze where we have been and to not stay stuck there. To say, what is good right now that God calls me to be engaged with this person or this group? And then also to dream about a future that is full of possibilities in relationship. Some of my friends say, Brad, you know, I can do just better by myself. But we are reminded in this season that we have been called into a relationship, not just with one another, not just with our families of birth, not just with our families of choice, but with God. That God sent God's Son into this world for us to be in relationship. That in bleak and dismal times, in times in the world when it seems as though God is the furthest away, God is in relationship with us. I'm reminded of one of the martyrs of the Christian faith that we've talked about before. His name is Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He was a Christian German theologian uh, who, who lived into his faith during the time of Nazi Germany. Dietrich could have stayed in the United States where he had what we might call a tenured professorship at one of the preeminent theological schools of the world in Union Theological Seminary in New York City. But he saw the atrocities that the Nazis were perpetrating. He heard about many of the things that were going on against what he believed to be the will of God and chose to go back. Upon going back and being a pastor and a, and a seminary instructor, he was arrested by that Nazi party. He was imprisoned by that party. And while he was in prison, he wrote this letter. On December 17, 1943, he wrote, For Christians, there is nothing particularly difficult about Christmas in a prison cell. I dare say it will have more meaning and will be observed with greater sincerity here in this prison than in places where all that survives of the feast is the name. Let that settle in for just a minute. Is Christmas more than a name for you? Christ was born in a stable because there was no room for him in the inn. These are the things that a prisoner can understand better than anyone else. For him, the Christmas story is glad tidings in a very real sense. And that faith gives him a part in the communion of saints, of fellowship transcending the bonds and bounds of time and space and reducing the moments of confinement here to insignificance. Bonhoeffer's Christmas in a prison cell is a reminder that Christians live and wait in the hope for what? For promised deliverance, redemption, and salvation, sometimes patiently and sometimes and faithfully impatient, according to John M. Buchanan. As I close this message, seeking peace in our families, my personal experiences are mixed, as I have shared. 
Therefore, I will defer again to our author that has been noted. Scripture reminds us that the way believers or followers of Jesus, I might add, regard and relate to one another has evangelical. And again, I would add eternal implications. When we are seen as arguing, quarreling, and name-calling people, we discredit the gospel we espouse. Nothing does more damage to the mission of the church in the 21st century than our shameful disunity. I want to invite my Willow Hill Church family and challenge my United Methodist Church family and invite friends who are not part of any of those families to re-engage in the mission and vision of this Advent season. Yes, Tim, it is still about mission and vision. Preparing to welcome and celebrate the infant Jesus into our heart and daily living as we look to the one who makes it all happen and who loves us all unconditionally.